right side and complete to Najoku. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Now Mayfield. Going out wide, finds Chubb. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Here's Mayfield. Forced out to his left. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. It'll be a sack and a loss of three, but more importantly, it brings up fourth down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Now, early on, you know, Charles, every game could be called a measuring stick game. But I think when it comes within your division like this, it's a measuring stick game with a little extra entry. I would agree with that totally because all division games have a little extra to them. But I like where this game is situated because at this stage of the season, it has that little extra juice, but at the same time, it's not a make or break if this were, let's say, week 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood. From the 24, Jackson throwing the out route incomplete. It's Andrews, and he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Play action. Now Jackson on the move to his left. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. Jackson, nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. In their locker room, they've got a sign that says defense wins championships. And Charles, they pointed to that this week, said that has to be us looking good early. I like how you saw that because of the bold letters, right? You saw the emphasis that they place on that and what they believe in. And for them, it's every single snap. So it's not just a matter of getting to the quarterback and knocking the ball free. They're trying to read when that ball's going to come free. As soon as those hands separate to throw the ball, they want to be there and have a chance to knock it out. Mayfield now after the fumble recovery. He'll take his shot for the end zone. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Anthony Schwartz, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that will tie our score here in this opening quarter to play. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line.
The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. midfield and inside the 45. That time on the run pass option when he decided to throw it, not a quick little drop off. He went downfield a bit. Reminiscent of a triple option quarterback in college because he faked it inside and instead of immediately throwing it out to the perimeter, stepped back in the pocket to find a target downfield. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 43. it off out of the gun. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. These two teams all tied after one. Jackson. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 44. And it's a tremendous return as they finally get him at about the 10-yard line. Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head. Drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you see what results? Interceptions. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. On third down, Mayfield. Incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. A 
the bottom line, tremendous starting field position really squandered there as they wind up going backwards and then come up with just three. Well, getting the three turned out to be important. I can imagine the head coach when he ordered the field goal, please salvage something out of this drive. That was not fun to watch. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once it threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Second and ten. Jackson flushed out right open man is the tight end Nick Boyle and he'll be out of bounds but able to get it up past the 45 that is definitely what we call our defense an uh-oh play and what you mean by that is against Lamar Jackson when you see him out of the pocket your first thought is uh-oh he's gonna try and run it how do I get to him and get him on the ground and guess what that didn't happen, and his receivers took advantage. He's going deep for Brown. And that is incomplete. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Here's second and ten. It's Jackson. That's complete. It's Devin Duvernay. And way down into the red zone before he's dropped inside of Cleveland's 15. 
The timing was absolutely true as he caught it working across the field. Plenty of space for him to roam, but notice how he keeps his head on a swivel, looking for defenders who may crop up out of nowhere. That turned into a big play. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. A great play there with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Ravens have retaken the lead. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and the lead is now 14-10. to 10. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. A fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. The Cleveland offense ready to go. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Dancing to his left. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. And they gave themselves options there on the third down play and were able to convert on that RPO. Shows a lot of trust with the guy taking the snap, doesn't it? Because you're counting on him to make the right reads and give the ball where it's supposed to go. And he did on that play. Mayfield this time gets it off to Chubb. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. on third down just one for three thus far this is third and eight mayfield looks to throw and it's hauled in by 
Austin Hooper. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. They give the chum out of the gun. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder coming up at halftime, we'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in this second week of the regular season. From the 40 now on second down, Mayfield drops it off for Chubb. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. And they'll use him out in the backfield and sometimes quite a bit. They're just trying to get him touches any way they can. Four catches a week ago, there's another one right there. So first and 10 now from the 30. Mayfield to throw it. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Oh, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Mayfield. Dumps this to his running back, Chubb. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff works on him, We'll step aside and be right back. On third down, it's Nick Chubb. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. On the ground, it's Chubb. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Chubb will get the call, running left. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. Steps away to his left, toward the end zone, but that's gonna wind up incomplete. These guys had to settle for a field goal the last time moving the ball down the field. They may have to do it again on this drive. That could be frustrating. Yeah, I don't wanna be cliche, but at least they were able to get three last time, three here, not the worst thing in the world. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive as they go to work with 12 seconds on the clock. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. Finding his safety valve here, that's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Now a timeout taken. 
Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now it's Jackson. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. This time they stay on the ground. And he lost the football. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. The Browns going to see the football first, but they trail here as we resume play on EA Sports. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Browns drive about to get started. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. A good run by Chubb on first down as he'll get about six yards there. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Four yards remain for second down. They run it again with Chubb. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Play fake, Mayfield. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Regular, regular, regular. Hey, A second down throw for Mayfield. He's got his receiver, Cooper. And all the way in, touchdown. Taking the lead. Hey, we're 33. Alert, alert, alert. <laughs> Here's Chubb to try to run it in. And he will find the end zone here. And the lead moves up to seven. And so they run it in on the two-point try. And so often, Charles, we talk about from the offense's perspective what you do on a two-point conversion. How about the defense? How do they play run versus pass? It's really difficult for them because I think most teams want to play for the pass. That's what they see most teams do. And so are you able to mass enough people inside if the team decides to run it? Very difficult. I think what you're seeing a lot more now, people blitzing the two-point conversion. They want you to make a quick decision and make it right now. There the offense wins the battle for two. 
The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. They'll look for a drive to tie this up, down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. Now a throw here to his running back. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A big play there on the catch and run. That turned into a very well orchestrated play right there. Gonna work his way out of the backfield to the right. And after he looked it in, he found plenty of space to roam and picked up big yardage. On first and 10, it's Jackson. He's got his man, it's Andrews. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 34-yard line. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. Throwing left side, it's complete. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. He's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10-yard line. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. They'll keep it on the ground. Cottrell, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run, and the Ravens are an extra point away from tying the football game. Tucker with the extra point, and it will tie our game here in the third. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and ten. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Chubb. 
And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. 77 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Heavy set out there on third and one. Mayfield now. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And the Ravens are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. So this is something we didn't see at all from this offense in the victory last week. That's a turnover. They didn't have any, but giving the ball away here in the opening quarter. I love the surprise in your voice because it's exactly what you stated. Didn't see it last week, but it was a key to their win. And it'll be a key to this game as well, protecting the football. Didn't get it done there. They'll run on first down. Cottrell, and some space here. And he takes this way down deep into Cleveland territory. It's a big play there for Baltimore. Now this game's ripe for the taking, and that run, I think it means he wants to take it. Not only does he want to take it, he doesn't care what they're going to do on the defensive side of the ball. You can be prepared for him. He's coming at you anyway. Right back to him on first down. And he loses the football a second time. Could have been a costly mistake, but as it turns out, they keep possession. You can't give away these types of opportunities in the red zone. And I'm sure that was flashing through his brain as the ball escaped his hands. Fortunately for him, able to get picked up by his team, fumble recovered. They still have an opportunity deep in the red zone. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. And he's dropped just before the line to game. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And now prior to this third and one, we're going to get a timeout here. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. A field goal would get them the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. And they give this time to the tailback. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. First and goal when we come back. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. A field goal could get them the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Here's Jackson. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Andrews. Touchdown! Mark Andrews, his second touchdown on the season. And the Ravens have broken the tie. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and they will take a seven-point lead. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. No return on this one as the fair catch is signal for and taken. The Browns drive about to get started. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. 
A give running right is Chubb. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 87 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Three yards the gain there, second down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. From the 41, Mayfield. They'll get this to Chubb out of the backfield. It'll go as a gain of four. And that's going to bring up a third down. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. gun it's a give to Chubb and Chubb fighting but nowhere to go he's going to be stopped short of that first down marker only a yard on the pickup there and it's going to leave him with a fourth down up a second and nine. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier, probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Here's second and nine. Jackson to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. And he's got his man, Marquise Brown. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Hollywood, Marquise Brown, 39 yards. And the Ravens are on their way to a 2-0 start. Tucker with the extra point. And the lead now up to 14. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat? It's caught inside the 25. Touchdown, Browns. Anthony Schwartz with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Browns have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Fairbairn 
and good with the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. He will return this from deep in the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts. So we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, I and mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in place, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. They'll keep it on the ground. Cottrell, and for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. From the gun on third down, Jackson. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. A 40-yard punt, give him three on the return, and the Browns will take over first and ten. The Browns drive about to get started. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. Yeah, we'll see if it's that easy here. Mayfield. Now Mayfield lost the football. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Mayfield to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. The Browns send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. This will be touchdown inside the 20. He'll spot it at the 18-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really not much reason to use him at this point as this one is all but over. 
If they use the timeouts here, it's strictly for show. We got a plane to catch. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. Cottrell. Just a couple on the ground there. That's going to bring up third and about six. Two yards on the first down carry and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Third down, Cottrell. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. And that's on the guard, Kevin Zeitler. Jackson, he's going to keep it himself. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half to put this one on ice. And I know a lot of people watching this one were thinking to themselves, I'll bet halftime was really interesting. Probably took the paint off the walls with some of the words that were said. <laughs> but I get the sense that it was much more of the adjustments they made. They came in with a game plan that we saw that didn't work in the first half. They made the adjustments necessary, went away from that, and then they got it together, got a spark, and then took off. It's really nice to watch in the second half. So for Baltimore, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with Durant.